Today, we're going to look at a movie that offers us a lot more than what last week gave us. We're going to look at The Batman vs. Dracula. The Batman is the first animated incarnation of the Dark Knight since the DC animated universe has inspired by Bruce Timm, and frankly, it got a lot more hate than I think it deserved. It definitely had its flaws, but overall I found it pretty enjoyable. After its first season wrapped in 2005, the show got its first direct-to-DVD feature film, The Batman vs. Dracula. And yeah, I thought it sounded as stupid as everyone else did. But in retrospect, it makes more sense for Batman to be pitted against a villain than one of his fellow heroes. Tell me, Batman. Do you bleed? You will. After a bit of violin music backing up the opening credits, giving the movie a distinct Dracula feel, our story begins in Arkham Asylum. And is it me, or does this Arkham look disturbingly like stately Wayne Manor? Weird. We see one of the inmates working on a deal with the Penguin. If Penguin helps him escape, he'll split the millions of dollars he's stolen 50-50. Penguin agrees, but unfortunately his new business partner told someone else about it first. You told someone else? Well, first I, I went to the only one who's escaped from here more times than you. Oh, take it easy. I, I don't think he got what I was telling him. Oh, oh, oh! I mean, talk about having a real screw loose, right? Huh? You told him? Joker! He's escaped! Goodbye, Arkham! Hello, Gotham! <laughs> Thanks to the magic of a device called the Batwave, which is apparently a surveillance network hardwired throughout all of Gotham City, Batman picks up on Joker's escape, and he's immediately on the hunt. Remember what a big deal it was in The Dark Knight, how it was ethically wrong for Batman to watch everything going on all over Gotham? This Batman is three years into his crime-fighting career, and he's just saying, Yeah, whatever. I can wire the whole city because of Batman. By the way, I love this Joker. The dreadlocks make him look like he's wearing a jester's hat, and they really make him look like the chaos he's supposed to embody. The fingerless gloves? They're just rubbing themselves in Batman's face. Look at me, Batman! I'm leaving behind all the fingerprints I want! Go ahead! Study them until your eyes bleed. I don't care if you track me down, and you'll never find out who I am! <laughs> and the lack of shoes? This is a guy who simply does not care about how messed up his feet get while doing all these crazy gymnastics of his. Tweet, tweet. Ugh. And then we get the Penguin. Remember how I said the show had some flaws? Most of them had to do with him. I like how they're evoking Danny DeVito's Penguin from Batman Returns, but why is his hat as big as his entire body? At this point, it just looks like he's compensating for something. And join us again next week when Batman analyzes the Freudian implications of Penguin's umbrella. And yeah, about the umbrella weapons. Sure, they're cool, but if they want to make him a martial artist capable of kicking Batman's ass, they just become pointless. It also really doesn't help that they got Tom Kenny to provide his voice. I think we can save each other a whole lot of trouble if we agree to split the tank. And I'm sorry, I hate ripping on you all the time, Tom Kenny, but... It's like every voice that you do that appears on my show ends up sounding like Spongebob. I HATE SPONGEBOB! It's not long before Batman finds Joker and they duke it out. Joker escapes into the river, but he forgot to turn off his joy buzzer. And you thought that the Joker's death in Arkham City was... shocking. Meanwhile, Penguin is searching for the stash of loot, 
which is hidden in Gotham Cemetery. This must be the place. Hmm. I'll take what's behind door number one. Hey, who am I talking to? He pries open a coffin, which he thinks has the money inside. But he ends up accidentally resurrecting the shriveled up corpse of Dracula. Boy, when things go wrong. After he bites the Night Watchman, turning him into a vampire, he enlists the Penguin to be his new Renfield. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll have you know, sir, I am a cobblepot, and cobblepots do not serve. I'm Penguin, I'll be your server. <laughs> Wonderful. Maybe Dracula can hypnotize him to make better jokes. Penguin tells Dracula that he's not in Transylvania anymore, and Dracula starts to ponder over what might have happened. Then if I am no longer in Transylvania, near my castle, it must be due to forces outside my control. Okay. Admittedly, the design for that castle is pretty cool. I especially like the spires underneath the castle that look like stalactites. But I gotta ask... What exactly is the point of building a castle halfway off of a cliff? Everything in life is location, location, location. It must be due to forces outside my control following my death. It seems after I was vanquished, my remains were relocated far from Transylvania. All right. Them sending you far off to the other side of the world was a pretty good idea. Except, how are you regenerating if they didn't send any of your homeland along with you? I mean, they just send you away with nothing but your coffin? Technically, that should have worked. We then find the rather metrosexual Bruce Wayne on a date with TV news anchor Vicky Vale. Of course, she's supposed to be our damsel in distress for this movie, but hey, at least she's not screaming in every other scene. <laughs> As usual, Bruce has to cut their date short so he can play Batman, but he invites her to a tech expo at Wayne Manor where he'll be showing off some new alternative energy sources. The tally of missing persons has spiked dramatically in Gotham this past week, with Gotham PD no closer to uncovering who or what might be behind the mysterious disappearances of these lost ones. A cloud of fear hangs over our city. Gotham PD aren't the only ones who are baffled. Might the missing penguin be behind this? No ransom demands, not his style. And speaking of news, how was your dinner with the lovely Vicky Vale? Short, but sweet. What's interesting is that this incarnation of Alfred is a little more insistent on Bruce leading a normal life than what is traditionally seen in Alfred's, but he still goes along with Bruce's wishes and helps him however he can in his crime-fighting career. Just like Alfred is supposed to. <laughs> It's ruined! What's wrong with you? Why would you do that? Answer me! It had to be done, Master Bruce. Ugh. Let's see if tonight turns up Penguin or any of these lost ones. I lost Joker. I'm not gonna lose anyone else on my watch. I love how Bruce is actually remorseful about Joker being killed. Sure, he doesn't like the guy, but he has to value all human life, just like a hero is supposed to. Apparently, Gotham City also lies in some kind of a space-time bubble thingy where the moon is always full. This place is just begging for a werewolf movie. Batman, while making a routine patrol, runs into some of the lost ones who have turned into vampires. He barely escapes with his life, 
But no time for that, he has a tech expo to put on. And to this movie's credit, it is really refreshing to see this Bruce Wayne holding an actual gala instead of another rave like we've seen him do in episodes prior. Dracula thirsts for the blood of Gotham's upper class, and he's led to the expo under Penguin's suggestion. I wonder where Dracula would find a Dracula cape on such short notice. Anyway, the snappily dressed Dracula crashes the party. Don't vampires need to be invited before they can enter someone's dwelling? And he introduces himself. And you are? Alucard. Dr. Alucard. Dr. Acula. Come on, Bruce Wayne doesn't recognize the name Alucard. He prides himself on forcing every bit of information into his head that he can, regardless of how trivial it may seem. He wouldn't have picked up Alucard from Son of Dracula or that Helsing anime. I am new to Gotham, a recent transport from Eastern Europe. Funny that he doesn't say that he's from Transylvania, nor did he apparently look up whether or not Transylvania still exists. Where is he from? Eastern Europe, that'll suffice. We spoke of my work. What of yours? Research and development. For instance, the Wayne Industries SL5. It's the most efficient technology to date for collecting solar energy, and storing it as true sunlight. I'll have to dispose of you before this obvious plot device bites me in the ass later. He actually hypnotizes Bruce so he can do just that, but thankfully Alfred arrives to snap him out of it. How you card. Pardon me. Thanks. Whatever are you writing? His name. Alucard. I had to write this down as scary as possible. Bruce starts doing some vampire research, and Vicky Vale suddenly drops this little bit of good news. I saw what got the guy. Saw it with my own two eyes. It was a bat. I saw a huge shadow of a bat. As such, Gotham PD has concluded that the perpetrator behind these bizarre abductions is none other than... The Batman. So yeah, on top of stopping this new crime wave, Batman has to clear his own name. <laughs> Mask of the Phantasm! <clears throat> Pardon me. Batman decides to stake out the cemetery when a SWAT team shows up to- HOLY CRAP! I FORGOT THEY USE ACTUAL BULLETS IN THIS MOVIE! In the show, all we ever saw were these weird little electrical pellet thingies. Stay put, Bat. That is, unless you want the shock of a lifetime. Dracula takes out the SWAT team so he can have Batman all to himself, and he proposes that Batman join him in his army of the undead. Batman refuses, kick-ass fight scene happens, but Dracula runs off when the morning sun starts creeping in. Batman limps home to lick his wounds, and he has a trippy little dream sequence, so yet again, we can see him being all torn up by the loss of his parents and stuff. Seen it. And come on, the cloaked rider... Could they really not just put the Mark of Zorro in that marquee? That's the movie that Bruce Wayne saw with his parents on that fateful night. We later find Penguin about to wake Dracula for another night of feeding, and who does he bump into? Everyone's so shocked to see me these days. You, the fisherman who found me tangled in his net. By the way, who knew electroshock therapy could be so invigorating? I've been dead once already. It's very liberating. Joker follows Penguin into the crypt, giving Dracula his first meal of the day. Breakfast in bed. Fresh squeezed. And what's worse than the Joker? The undead Joker. And it's here where we see my favorite scene in the whole movie. Unlike the rest of the Lost Ones, who are more or less vampiric zombies, Joker is somehow able to maintain his mental capacities and he goes to a blood bank and just starts going to town. Mm. A bold finish of wild cherries with a hint of oak. <laughs> Ew, that is so nasty, I love it. As the inevitable fight scene between him and Batman transpires, he even gets showered in blood. That is both horrid and awesome. It's not enough that he feeds on blood for his very survival, he is reveling in his vampirism. Very good idea to have this kind of lighting, too. Since cartoon politics these days can't show bad guys using conventional weapons, I'm pretty sure that means excessive amounts of blood is right out as well. So how do these animators get around it? By dimming the lights a little and coloring the blood black so it looks less blood-like, but the effect remains intact. 
That is brilliant. Batman eventually gets the better of Joker, and takes him to the Batcave to act as his test subject as he tries to work out a cure for vampirism. I also love the formula for the show being repeated in this movie. A new threat comes to Gotham, Batman tries to take it down, but he gets his ass kicked. He goes back home to research the problem a little more, figures out how to defeat the new threat, and then he does. That is how you show Batman saving the day. He can't just have his ultimate weapon being him saying, I'm Batman. While Batman researches the night away, he forgets that he was supposed to have a date with Vicky tonight. Vicky. Astonishingly, she still speaks the world of you. Not enough for her to actually show up in anything after this movie, but still. Batman finally whips up an antidote and cures Joker of his vampirism, and then Joker tells Batman that the last thing he remembers was being in the caves underneath Gotham Cemetery. Dracula exposits that he wants to bring his cremated wife back from the dead, but in order for him to do that, he needs a human sacrifice instead of just a little bit of blood like what brought him to life. He abducts Vicky on her way home, since who would be a more fitting sacrifice than Vicky? And Batman gears up for the climactic battle between the Dark Knight and the Undead. He uses all of his antidote capsules on the Lost Ones before he can try to cure Dracula, and I guess throwing a bomb at the Soul Transfer is enough to stop it. <laughs> Apparently Batman's a big fan of the Mythbusters. You got a problem? Just blow it up! They fight their way through the catacombs under Gotham City, and Penguin runs after Vicky. <laughs> No. I'm not gonna do it. I've already done too many jokes from The Shining lately, and I gotta stop before it gets old. Oh, screw it. Here's Ozzy! Batman eventually leads Dracula into the Batcave. I think it's about time for a little bat payoff, don't you? Rise and shine. You are... Bruce Wayne. I'm the Batman. And you're dust. And that is how you properly employ... I'm Batman. With Dracula gone, Vicky is safe, the Lost Ones have no memory of what happened, and Penguin gets blamed for the abductions. Though details remain sketchy due to amnesia inflicted on the hostages, apparently via some sort of hypnosis. But the hostages are safe and sound, and it now seems that the Batman was unfairly blamed for Penguin's crimes. So it is safe to say we can swap his status from villain back to vigilante. This is Plot Convenience News for all your exposition needs. Thus, our movie ends with Batman continuing his never-ending quest against the forces of evil. It just kind of sucks that this movie predates the Bat-Signal, which wouldn't be established until the end of the second season, because this final scene is just begging for the Bat-Signal to light up the sky right now. So that was the Batman vs. Dracula. And yeah, I poke fun at it, but honestly, I recommend it. Granted, it takes a few liberties with traditional vampire mythology, and it kind of depends on a few contrivances for it to work, but the action is great, it's got some genuinely creepy moments in it, and surprisingly, it's nowhere near as silly as its title would imply. Batman has faced vampires before in the comics, but if he's going to make the transition into fighting vampires in cinema, this was a pretty good way to do it. And seriously, this was a huge breath of fresh air from reviewing Vampire Dog last week. Frankly, I am just glad that I will not have to review anything else but talking dogs for a good long time. <laughs> Two of a kind, violent, unsound of mind You're the yin to my yang, can't you see? 
And if I were to leave, you would grumble and grieve, facing bats, you'd be lost without me. You'd be lost, you'd be lost, facing bats, you'd be lost without me. We have so many wonderful stories, I have studied the mind of this bat. A hero with no praise or glory, just his cape and his cave and his... Grumble and grieve, face it, bats, you'd be lost without me. You'd be lost, you'd be lost, you'd be lost. You'd be lost. <laughs> face it, bats, you'd be lost without me. Happy Halloween. I'm Batman. See you next week. I'm the knight.